right. Well, welcome to another episode of Tools and Tea Time on Tuesdays with Tim and Anna. Yay! We're glad you're all here. We hope you have a good time and that you walk away with some fun ideas. We got a great guest for you today. Um, we thought we'd check in with you first and see how where people are. So here great movie moment poll. Um, we're wondering which of these great movie moment characters do you most identify with? We'll let you look at the first is Kermit from the Muppet movie singing Express Yourself. The second is Jack and Rose from Titanic in that classic moment. The third is Georgina from getting from Get Out saying no, 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 no. Uh, the next is, is uh, Commander Lovell from Apollo 13 saying, Houston, we have a problem. And the last is Britney Spears from Britney After saying, I want my life back. So let me go ahead and start the poll and you guys can vote on where you are, including I put none of the above. So uh, I'll launch the poll. Where are you today? Which, which one best comes closest to how you're feeling? Do you see the poll there? You can go ahead and just vote when it comes up. We see it. We're okay. getting results. Oh, really? That's so weird because I don't see the results, but you do, Anna? Okay, tell me when you think we have about everybody in and I'll show the results. Okay, we have, we have 11 out of 13 right now, so I think we're good. Yeah, because, yeah close enough. Yep. It's not required. Okay, so let's see, we'll share the results. And Anna, tell us, what, tell us how the results look because I don't <laughs> see those. All right, so right now, uh, Houston, we have a problem is the winner. Uh, <laughs> I totally get that. Uh, Georgina, get out. No, 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 no. Uh, number two. And then that's pretty much it. Everything else was a tie. Okay. I had somebody who put Jack and Rose uh, a week ago and I was like, what? Because that's like a moment of ecstasy. And they said, I feel like my life is spinning out of control. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so enough fooling around. You didn't come to just hear us, but we're, wherever you are today, we hope that you could just find time to take care of yourself. That was our first episode of this season with some breathing, walking, uh, put on your own life mask before you help all those students. Sometimes it's so hard to give yourself permission to do that. So here's our roadmap from today. We're going to start out with this week's theme and with uh, the, and introducing our special guest. Uh, and so I I think I'm going to read our letter from a vi last week. We had the queen. You'll never guess who wrote us a letter this week from our imaginary fan base. <gasps> oh my goodness. What? Are I you know. kidding me? I uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a little flustered, but I think I can read it. Hold on. Tim and Anna, I am hearing from kids and parents both that they are sick of so much screen time and that they want something hands-on? I'm no teacher. So how do they do that when they're so far away? Who is the Martha Stewart of education? I bet she could use a drink. Sincerely yours, Martha Stewart. Well, you know, Anna, how freaky it is because you know who we got as our special guest. In fact, our special guest this week was just named last month the Martha Stewart of Education by Ed Week Magazine in September of 2020. She's Beth Enderly from Mortgage Academy. She's our special guest. That's amazing, Tim. And oh my gosh, yes, she is the Martha Stewart of Education. Look at the way cool study stalls that Beth and her awesome husband built this summer for her reading groups during COVID. Yeah, and we put the directions for those in the resources for this week, if anybody wants to know, or the information. And you know, Anna, first we have the queen, then we have Martha Stewart, like, who's next? Oh. I know, of course, I'm a science geek. So anyway, 
Okay, so this week's theme is hands-on routines at a distance. Hands-on routines at a distance. And uh, I think we ought to move on down the road and introduce our guest, Beth, Her uh, Beth Harriet Enderly. And uh, she can uh, tell us about our tool highlight of the week. And so, Beth, uh, do you want me to leave a slide? Uh, and our tool highlight of the week is home and away toolboxes and Desmos. Do you want me to leave this slide up or do you want to go to grid view so, and let Pete and talk? Why don't you go to grid view just because then I can see people. All right, I will stop sharing and everybody can click that little checkerboard in the upper right hand box if you want to see everybody or just click leave it where it is and watch Beth. She's fascinating. <laughs> Absolutely. Tell, um, us, tell us a little about yourself and so my name is Beth Harriet Enderley. I go by Beth Enderley. Tim and I knew one another a, a few years back. So that's why he sticks my maiden name in there. But um, I currently teach at Mortgage Academy. Show me a thumb up if you've ever heard of Mortgage Academy. Yes, okay. And that, <laughs> um, I had never heard of Mortgage Academy until a little over four years ago. I taught in Denver Public Schools many years back, um, special education. And then I've been in Douglas County Public Schools most of my teaching time. Um, I'm a special educator by training, and that's what I did at first. Then I kind of morphed into kindergarten. I started full day kindergarten in the school I was in, and then um, taught fourth grade before I left. And I discovered Mortgage Academy. We are a K through eight school on the campus of National Jewish Health for chronically ill students. And so we are a totally separate building. We're not not connected to the hospital other than the tunnels that run underneath and connect all those buildings there at the corner of Colfax in Colorado. Um, we have students that go to school there who have medical needs that are above and beyond what can typically be met in any kind of public and even private school. So um, because National Jewish has a pulmonary specialty emphasis, a lot of our kids have really severe asthma, a number of our kids have severe allergies, but we have kind of a little bit of everything. We have students who've had organ transplants. Um, we've got type one diabetes. We've got cystic fibrosis. So it's kind of the gamut. And um, we have, currently we have seven classrooms. They're sometimes two grades together, but we try to split out for all the main academics as far as literacy and math by grade level. Um, because of COVID, we did not take new students last year. So I have been teaching just straight kindergarten simply because of the numbers that we've had the last couple of years. And then this year without taking new students and because of the odd way we all left and ended last year, we just all looped up with our class. So we're all teaching a grade up from what we were doing last year. Um, and as that came to evolve over the summer, um, we were planning to go back face to face. We had and we still do have three different levels of kind of plans as far as like face to 100% face to face, a hybrid, and then 100% online. We have a few families who have chosen to keep their students or their kiddos online just because of their medical. It's even in our small little school, it's still kind of scary for them to be out. Um, we're operating though under the most wonderful oversight of the hospital. So um, that photo that Tim and Anna showed in the beginning of the plexiglass table was kind of a wish. And I haven't used that very much because the hospital, and it, I'm, when I say that, I'm talking about the higher up doctors who are epidemiologists and all those people that really know this the best. They come in and measure in each of our classrooms to make sure that all of our students sit six feet apart. And they, I mean, we use all, all hospital grade cleaning. We help with that. There's they come in with ultraviolet lights and they come in and actually spot check surfaces every night, even in our building to make sure that we're not catching COVID somewhere on a surface. So I feel like we're in the safest place possible. Anyway, that aside, we knew that there was still a plan and it still could happen even in the weeks that are coming um, that we all go online. It wasn't really a matter probably of when, I mean of if, but when. And so I started struggling or trying to figure out the struggle of young kids especially needs the hands-on and that's so hard to do with virtual. So I created a toolbox and I just grabbed one to be able to show. Um, 
I have put in the tool, and I'm going to share with you in a minute what's in the toolbox. At the beginning of the school year, we gave to each of our families a Chromebook and just basic school supplies in a bag, and then I gave the toolboxes. So that in the event that we had to pivot on a dime and you know pivot, which actually happened to my classroom two weeks ago, um, that we all got to school and then there was a possible exposure that included my classroom and one other classroom. And so we had to send everybody home, including me. And so they all went home, but they all have their toolbox and their Chromebook at home. So we are right now in the midst of our 14 day um, quarantine time before we can go back to school. So, and for the most part, everybody has had their toolbox so we can just keep going from where we were. Um, I'm gonna share with you really, really quickly, just what I've put in this for the, and again, keep in mind, these are primary kiddos. These are not exactly the same um, as what the kids are, but the big point that I, I guess, a big thing I wanna share and that Tim has, was interested in I use this all the time right now at school because just like you all, we can't share stuff within the classroom like we would under normal circumstances. So everybody has their own at school. Everybody's got a double 10 frame. You might want to go, go, sorry, Beth. Sorry, Beth. No. Uh, um, you might want to go to speaker go. view um, so that you can see what Beth is holding up. Instead of the little checkerboard, go to speaker view and you can hear, see what she's showing. I'm sorry, Tim. No, you're good. I just wanted to make sorry I interrupted. Okay. Okay, there, is that better? Okay, so I've got a double 10 frame that's in there. I've got a number line that's in there. Um, the kids have counters that are in there, double-sided counters that are in there of their own, pattern blocks of their own, dice of their own, um, bead racks. I don't know if anybody uses bead racks. It's out of the Netherlands and if you don't teach up probably up to third grade or so is really where it's the most helpful. But I put there, Tim's got something in the resource file about that. Um, but I made all these so kids had their own. Um, I had grabbed these from long ago. If anybody has ever used everyday math, <laughs> a number of years ago, a hundred of these were going in the trash and I being the um, trash collector that I am grabbed onto them. And they're templates that have not only pattern block shapes, but it's hard to see. There's a metric and a, um, inches ruler on either side of it. So we can still do measuring kinds of stuff. Um, then I have a couple other literacy things that again, for the primary kids are a little bit different, but it's some of the strategy th cards that we reference all the time. That's in there. But one of the big things that, and maybe a lot of you guys, and I apologize if you're already using this or you've figured it all out. In the spring, when and we had to pivot really quickly. We used a sheet protector with a piece of blank paper and we got dry erase markers for our kids with socks. We've come a long way now. And we actually gave to all our kids K through eight at Mortgage Academy, we got these um, pockets that are made to be a portable dry erase um, board because again, we can't share the basket of dry erase boards that I used to have in class that I would say grab a dry erase board as you come into the room kind of thing. So everybody has a dry erase board and in it for my youngs, I have uh, blank paper on the one side and then the writing paper that we use on the other side. Um, when we're in class face to face, we use the supply box sits right on the floor beside their table. The dry erase board we use probably two to five times a day because there's so many things we can do with it that we don't need to use paper, but yet it's the kids actually doing, you know, the work, especially with the math kinds of things where they can draw pictures, they can write out whatever they can do to figure things out. Um, and Beth, you mentioned that when you did have to go home because of quarantining your class, that some of the kids even started reminding you about rituals you had exactly. around the toolbox. They were like, wait, so, we do this first. Yep, yep. And the other piece to that that I've learned, and I would say I've learned it even better this fall, is just how much the whole structure that I've worked real hard to put in place while we've been in school. So we had gone through seven full weeks of class when we had to um, pivot and go and go home. And um, so some of those things, if any of you are familiar with number talks, um, and I put that in the resource folder that Tim and Anna will share with you as well. Um, number talks are just a way to take five to 10 minutes every day and 
I've always used, uh, well, I've done the best when I've used something someone else has created, so I don't have to think about it all the time. But every single day you talk about, it's really learning how to do mental math and then sharing with one another as you talk about, well, how did you figure that out? Or tell us how you figured that out. And so I had found a set, there's a woman on Teacher Pay Teacher named Anna Brantley who has a set that she's digitized, so you can use it with whatever platform you use virtually. And so that's one of the things, if we're at school, I just have it on the smart board each day for kids. But when we go home, it's one of the things that I go ahead and load into their daily assignments in Google Classroom. Um, so that's a great resource. Um, I use picture of the day for literacy and that's another one that's every single day and one of the biggest things then with the different routines like with the dry erase boards um, I will just say to the kids if we were at school this is where we would be up on the I'd be showing you on the smart board but now I'm going to show you here and we're going to do it here just like we would if we were at school so that's a big reminder um, I'm trying to think I'm looking at my notes here um, the one thing that I wanted to share, because I know a lot of you are not necessarily elementary teachers, there is a wonderful resource that I just learned about at a Zoom conference a few weeks ago called Desmos. Anybody know of that one or hear of that one before? Um, Desmos was launched in 2011, and it was launched to be a um, graphing calculator that would be available to anybody on a device. Um, since then, it's really grown. And in the last year, because of COVID, um, they have multiple kinds of calculators, if you're a secondary teacher in particular, um, that are totally free. Desmos is totally free. But then they've built this pretty amazing library for teachers um, that goes along with Desmos. And you can do things that are just reviewing things for kids, or you can actually do things where they're recording it and you'll be able to look at it later through Desmos. The other thing when I was introduced to it that I learned is if you go on Facebook, there is a group called Desmos for Educators. And for me with the younger students, they don't, um, Desmos was not really designed with primary students in mind, but there are so many teachers that are adding things and sharing all the time so that group, the gal who shared it with me said that's the most valuable Facebook group she's ever been a part of. So if you want to check into Desmos, I would look into that as well. Great. What have I left out, Tim or Anna? That's pretty good. Yeah. And we don't want to feel like we're cutting you short. We got about another minute if you had anything else. Otherwise, um, we'll let people start talking to each other. But did you have something you wanted to mention? I don't think so. I'm looking through my list here of things that I had, but I think that's kind of the main, those are my main ones that I want to share. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, um, you know, did you, I guess, do you find that the kids then, how are the kids showing you the work they're doing uh, with, with the home kit, the, the same kit? So they right now, a lot of the time, it's me trying to have them even hold it up. Sometimes when we start, though, I try to have them actually tip the screen of their Chromebook so I can sometimes see what they're doing if they're at a table that that works. Obviously, it's not always perfect with every child, depending on where they are. Um, I, we, on my list of to-dos, but it'll have to wait till we're back face-to-face -face again, is a way to be able to get them to take a picture and turn it in, in Google Classroom. Yeah. But we, we had not gotten to that point quite yet. I was just, I'm just happy that my kids can all independently get into their Chromebook. They can all check in and they can all get to Google Classroom and start down through the assignments if they need to, so. Yeah. That's great. And you know, uh, if you remember last spring, we had an episode where Robert featured a tool called Flipgrid, where kids can like video themselves showing their work and talking about it. And I just learned today about all the amazing accessibility features for Flipgrid, um, that it automatically, you, it automatically subtitles all the, anything that anyone's saying in the videos, uh, so that people with hearing impairments can read it. It also has like uh, uh, tools to help struggling read Readers, um, and basically they can show their work and they can, um, you know, they can, uh, they can uh, present. So I was thinking that'd be great if you teamed up some of these tools with that. So anyway, uh, we're going to move on to the last part of our day and I'll let Anna uh, say, explain what our prompt is for the breakout group. All right. So when you guys go into your breakout rooms, you're going to be discussing this. How could or do 
you build routines around materials that get kids away from the screen and make the quick pivot to home better for learning. And right. that's what we're going to be talking about. Okay. And it's on the chat as well. So we're going to be in breakout groups of about two, two to four, depending upon who's in your group. And we would appreciate it if perhaps uh, breakout group number, oh, let's just, let's have breakout group number uh, three stay in this room. So don't accept my invitation. That way you guys will be recorded so that anybody watching the recording can hear a conversation. So not stuff. And, and actually, there was also a note that I gave parents that said, we won't be able to replace this. You know, this needs to last you a few consumables. We can get you mid-year, but if um, everything in the box needs to stay. And so far, that seems to be working fairly well. Great. Well, I, I'm not a classroom teacher. I'm the librarian at my school. And um, before the, the COVID hit, I was a big STEM activity type teacher. Um, so our students, um, every teacher has chosen, we were remote to start the year, and then we came back to some online, or some in-person and online. So every teacher does have a little of both. Um, so when they come and see me, um, I've tried to do STEM, but just, uh, you know, I have enough supplies of my basic materials um, that I'm trying to get them at home just to think creatively about the basic stuff that we have. Um, so we try and think of the, I haven't created anything myself, but I think we are actually doing a lot of challenges with paper. And they're trying to figure out how paper um, can be used without any glue, without any tape. I mean, how you can make it into shapes. Just, I had someone today, they had a design around the creepy carrots. They had to design a fence around a perimeter of the garden plot. And the people at home, they had only paper. They had to, it had to be five inches tall and it had to be paper that stood up and they weren't allowed to use tape or glue. And they all did it. It was really great how they all figured it out. But I'm still working. I don't have an idea of a kit. I'm just trying to think of how to creatively use what I think they have at home. That sounds really great. And uh, you know what Tim was talking about flip grid before? Mm -hmm. It would have been a, I don't know, maybe you used it, but it would have been a great way for them to record themselves with their creations, you know, and then present. That, mm -hmm. that sounds really amazing. Um, for our second graders, we um, do use Seesaw. Um, our iPads are actually arriving this week. So that oftentimes is the piece that uh, captures that creativity for the K2 students. But I do use Flipgrid with the older students, just not with that particular thing. But yeah, they are great resources. Yes, and Seesaw is great because they can record themselves. So you're right, that's, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. What about you, John? Um, as far as materials go, um, yeah, we, my staff, the art teacher, sent out some materials, but not to every kid. So it's just hard to manage kids who have materials. I like the um, paper idea. I think that's great. So um, I'm going to get into science soon. I'm doing social studies right now, so that transition is a little difficult. But I'm ready to listen. I, I, boy, I never thought of the question, I guess, is the difficult thing. How do you give them materials and have them transition out of the screen time. That's something I never thought about. Beth really pushed my thinking on that. And uh, I think after Beth and I talked recently, I hadn't really thought about how much that could really help with routines. Like your working memory just gets overwhelmed in distance learning because you're trying to do so many things at one time. Um, and yet having those routines, like I know where to get this and I know what to do, um, means that you're not having to devote mental energy to that while you're trying to construct a sentence or, or uh, do a math problem, you know. One of the things we tried at the very beginning of the school year was to have students try and identify a learning space for themselves. So they weren't just flopping on a couch or they weren't, you know, in the midst of something that they had to identify a spot where they could set all of their materials out that they were sitting kind of in a chair propped up and ready to learn. We kind of talked about your posture and all those things that would translate from school to home and that they did put themselves in that kind of environment. Because um, I'm amazed really when we have kids online um, currently the noise, the background that they have to deal with when they're working with us. And so everybody has headphones, but when they unmute to talk to me, it's amazing what's going on behind them. So uh, 
be able to focus, I think, in those experiences um, is something. But that's the one routine I know teachers have really done a great job of kind of doing what, um, what Beth has, is they do have their own materials depending on their grade levels um, on that. But I think that just the idea, the concept of school has been something, I think, to establish that routine. They all have a morning message that they do online with each other to get that day started. So I like those activities. And, and I, I, go ahead, I I'm totally, sorry. I totally agree with what you're saying. Um, I think that is so difficult. We've had kids log in from under the covers. We've <laughs> had kids log in from under a table and they're, you know, looking up uh, or laying on the couch and um, establishing those routines, I think is key, especially with the little guys. Yeah. And, you know, when you do any testing with kids online, um, we do Dibbles testing for our uh, K, uh, K3 kids, and that's part of uh, state mandates. Um, if they don't have a, head, uh, a set of headphones, you cannot, it is so difficult to hear them saying their phonemes and putting sounds together. Uh, it really is very hard. So establishing routines is number one if you have to pivot and go online, or if you're already are online, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another routine, I guess, just to think about, you know, we have a school counselor that has, we're, a lot of us are using kind of a Bitmoji classroom and we inside of our Schoology. And um, our counselor has created lots of different activities that every teacher links her onto their pages so that the kids, if ever they need um, the information about, you know, her mindfulness kind of relaxation tools and stuff, things like that, that they have that uh, a place for them, to, a place for them to go and access that material. You're getting kind of ghostly there, Tim. Yeah, yeah, sorry, the door just <laughs> opened and a flood of light came in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that was an interesting conversation in our group. Thanks, everybody. You should know that everybody's back in the main room now. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, we'll close out the show, but we really appreciate Beth joining us today, don't we, Anna? And, uh, and so, absolutely. yeah, we reached the end, my friends. And Beth's uh, mentioned, uh, th the, the resources that Beth mentioned are in the folder uh, where you can find them that are sh it's shown on this screen. And the recording of this episode uh, is archived on our dmns.org website, like all of our episodes. Yes, and uh, I went ahead and I posted, um, or I pasted the link to uh, the resources on um, the chat right now. Um, and thank you for spending another half hour with us. We know your time is precious and we really enjoy having you here. We hope to see you here again next week when our guest will be Sherry Olson, who happens to be in the audience today. Mm -hmm. And Sherry will talk to us about the morning, uh, uh, the magic of morning meeting. All right, Sherry, we look forward to hearing from you. Um, if anybody uh, is looking for a workshop around relicensing, we have a workshop November 7th and 14th, and uh, it involves modeling, and we're gonna be sending out materials the end of this week. So I suggest your friends sign up. If not, in the meantime, See ya. See We're glad ya. you guys all came. Let us know what topics you're interested. Tell your friends if they'd like to come to join us on Tuesdays. Enjoy your tea and have a good week. Beth will stick around in case anybody has questions, I believe. Uh, Anna's got to zip out of here tonight pretty soon, but Beth and I will stick on and we'd love to have a conversation with anybody that wants to stay. Thanks for coming. Thank you guys.